It was time for both Magic Hawk and Yot Karina to leave Holy Loch, but this time we were going to separate destinations. Our cruising companions, Julie and John, had a rendezvous with other family members up at Oban and they had to leave in order to give themselves enough time to get through the Crenning Canal and make the journey up onto the outside of the west coast. Fair winds! Bye! It was sad to see Yacht Karina going out of Holy Loch, however we had shared some really good times together and as it happens it wasn't the last time we would see them on this journey. About an hour later Magic Hawk also left Holy Loch Marina but our journey was a little shorter, just about 8 miles up the Clyde to Rue Marina. We wanted to visit Rue Marina as we've actually been there before. It was 20 years ago and we had chartered a boat from there and it was Julie's first ever experience on a yacht. We had good memories from there so we thought we'd go for another look. Big ship coming up the Clyde. This one is called uh, the MSC Joy. Uh, it's come from Liverpool and it's heading for Greenock, according to the AIS. Marvellous thing, they say, AIS. Passing the Ardmore Point boy, going into the Gareloch. It's uh, the town of Helensborough ahead. And just spotted Rue Marina in the distance. Further up the Gareloch is Faz Lane, which is the home of Britain's nuclear submarines. It's no surprise then that the channel is very, very well buoyed and lots of navigational aids to keep you on track. We had no problem in getting a visitor's berth in the marina. In fact, we got the impression that uh, not a lot of visitors went there on a casual basis. It was quite empty. We had a walk around Rue Village that evening there was a nice church in the village, but unfortunately there wasn't a lot else. Walking up the Gareloch we had a good view of the Rue Narrows, and further up a good view looking back at the marina. The following day we caught the bus into Helensborough and had a walk around. On the quayside was a monument to Scottish engineer Henry Bell who died at Helensborough in 1830 and he was known for introducing the first successful steamboat service in Europe. It was a paddle steamer called Comet. Greenock was directly across the water from Helensborough and we could see the MSC Joy that we encountered yesterday in her berth. If we're honest, we weren't too over-enthusiastic about Helensborough and we decided that it was time to move on the next day. So we left soon after breakfast. It's Thursday the 23rd of June. We're just leaving uh, Rue Marina. Uh, absolutely glassy water this morning, not a breath of wind, zero uh, on the true wind speed. We 
just opposite uh, Goo Rock, the top of the Clyde here. Uh, it's a very busy river, there's uh, vessels all over the place, ferries crossing, uh, lots of AIS targets. Just kept my eye on this guy here, we were on uh, nearly a collision course. Came within a few hundred feet, but uh, he's going twice the speed of us, so uh, we got past quite easily. Interesting place. This is the Ashton Safe Water Mark, which is at the top of the Clyde here. And it's the point where the big ships make a right turn to go towards Port Glasgow. Lost count now of how many times we've actually seen the Waverley Paddle Steamer. Just uh, passing the lighthouse again now, which is on Clotch Point. We had a fairly close encounter with that when, when we sailed up the cloud. So uh, we've got a bit close. There were a couple of yachts that came out of Kip Marina for a day sail, but there was very, very little wind. You can see from the ensign on the stern of the boat, it is hardly moving. Our destination for the day was actually Millport, on the southern tip of the island of Great Cumbrae. However, as we approached Great Cumbrae, quite a sharp chop developed from the south and we were basically heading straight into it. So we had to reconsider because we thought Millport would be a little bit exposed uh, being south facing. So we decided to divert into Largs Marina, which was just a couple of miles away. Then, all of a sudden, this happened. That's the Calmac ferry we nearly hit going into the logs. Julie and I were busy putting on the fenders and ropes ready to go into Largs Marina, but we just couldn't understand where the ferry had come from. One minute it wasn't there, the next it was. But we did work it out a day or two later. In the meantime we passed the safe water mark outside the marina and made our final approach through the entrance. The footage top right is what Julie is actually filming in the main video. There was a cruise ship at the end of the pier which is at Fairley and it is an absolutely huge pier and we could hear a piper and a drummer in the distance. No doubt for the benefit of the American tourists. Largs Marina was the biggest marina that we've ever been to. Having said that, it was very well laid out. The rows of pontoons on the left were all in alphabetical order and we had been assigned L04. So it was just a matter of counting through the letters until we got to row L. However, we suddenly realized that there was a little bit of a problem. The etched plates which showed the birth numbers were screwed to the end of each pontoon finger but unfortunately they were pointing upwards and it was almost impossible to read them from off the boat. There was nobody around to ask so we just reasoned that L04 would be somewhere near the end of the row. 
However, that wasn't the case. L04 was quite away from the end of the row and by the time we realised where it was, we'd actually gone past it. The only thing we could do then was to go to the end of the row where there was a little bit more space and turn the boat around. On the way back we found the right berth this time and we got in just before another yacht was coming down the fairway. Julie hopped off and got our mid cleat rope firmly attached to the finger and very kindly a passing lady came down the finger and took the stern line for us which was very very helpful. And here's our track down the Firth of Clyde from Rue to Largs. The town of Largs itself was nowhere near Largs Marina. It was a good 20 minute walk down the coastal path and to be honest the transport infrastructure just wasn't very good. There were no direct buses that stopped at the marina and uh, it was very difficult to get a taxi. The stern of Magic Hawk was easily lost in the sea of other boats that were around it. There was actually 730 berths in the marina. There were many hundreds of boats ashore on the hard standing as well as multiple other facilities. When we came into Largs Marina today we had huge trouble finding the slip that we were supposed to be on because the numbers are actually um, screwed in facing upwards but we've just noticed that the numbers are actually on top of the piles. Now why didn't they tell us that on the radio on the way in? The following day gave us near gale force winds so we decided to go for a walk down the coastal path towards Fairley. This shot is especially for my next door neighbour Phil, I know he'll enjoy it. The sea was pretty lively outside Larks but of course it didn't stop the ferry. This is the pier again at Fairley, this time without the cruise ship. On the way back we pass the area assigned for the storage of trailers and winter cradles. We've never seen so many. There was also an interesting display of anchors and other equipment along the coastal path. I think most of it had been donated by the Navy. We finally figured out why we almost hit the ferry on the way into Largs. When we started to put our ropes and fenders on, the ferry was still on Great Cumbrae. The journey was so short that it was on top of us before we knew it. A lesson learned. With the weather still poor, with strong winds and rain, we had to walk down into Largs in order to get the train to Glasgow for a day out. This statue is known locally as Magnus the Viking and was made to commemorate the 750th anniversary of the Battle of Largs. Largs Station is the end of the line for this branch but had a beautiful garden next to the platform. The trip into Glasgow took about an hour. We had heard a lot about the rejuvenation work on the banks of the Clyde so we had a walk down the river and had a look for some of the more famous buildings that we often see on TV news. 
we soon spotted the headquarters of BBC Scotland and next to it was the main head office for Scottish TV or STV. We could see in the distance uh, another famous building which is known locally as the Armadillo. We crossed the Clyde Arc Bridge for a better look at the view on the other side. The old Clydeport crane looked fantastic on the banks of the Clyde and behind it was the Glasgow Hydro building and here's the STV headquarters. After walking for miles and drinking coffee we got the train back to Largs. I was able to video from the train as we passed Largs Marina to show the scale of the site Apart from the 730 berths and all that storage space for cradles and uh, boats and caravans and motorhomes and more boats and on the edge of the site was actually a motorhome park for the public to use. It was just immense. Tuesday the 28th of June it's absolutely pouring down with rain and it has been most of the night as well the winds blowing hard it's just dreech This was the third time on our journey that we've been held up for bad weather, but it wasn't all bad. On one fine evening we walked to this local monument which is called the Pencil and it commemorates the Battle of Largs back in the 13th century. This was basically the Scots versus the Vikings, but for us it gave us a great opportunity for some fantastic photographs as the sun went down.